Hi everyone, happy Friday. I am feeling extra flowery today because today is May Day. And May Day or May 1st is traditionally celebrated for two reasons. First of all, May Day is traditionally celebrated as a European holiday or a uh, majorly European holiday as it is celebrated as the onset of spring. So it has its tradition in Greek and ancient uh, Roman history. It is celebrated as a day that we celebrate flowers and things that are growing and being outside. So there's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of gathering of wildflowers. There's the tradition of the maypole and dancing around the maypole. And so we just celebrate a lot of growth, um, sunshine, and, and things of that nature. And that, that holiday didn't really transfer over to uh, America. Uh, we celebrate it a, a little bit, or we have some traditions that we might see in schools or some organizations may pay honor to May Day or the onset of spring. Um, but the Puritans weren't really into May Day. They kind of identified it as a pagan holiday. So a lot of those traditions didn't follow over into the Americas. So this is a holiday that's really more so celebrated over in Europe. The second holiday that we celebrate on May Day or May 1st is International Workers Day. So International Workers Day is celebrated as a celebration of labor unions. Okay, so both in Europe and the United States, there were issues of worker conditions back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, so in the United States specifically, May 1st or International Workers Day celebrates or honors, more so remembers, uh, rather than celebrates, an event that happened in Chicago in 1886. So around 1884, labor unions started popping up in the United States. And the reason was because working conditions were really, really bad at that time. So you had things like children working in uh, manufacturing places. You had very, very unsafe conditions. Uh, you had people working for 16, 17, 18 hours a day. So very unsafe conditions, um, people complaining a lot because they were unreasonable conditions to be working in, okay? So labor unions started and those people fought for better working conditions so that their lives could be better. Well, in 1886, that was the first day, May 1st, 1886, was the first day these labor unions decided people were only going to work a work eight hour day and then walk out of their jobs. So the first strike happened, 1886, to uh, have an eight hour work day. And so this strike happened on that day across the United States, around 300,000 or 400,000 workers walked out of their jobs. In Chicago alone, 40,000 workers walked out of their jobs and they had a peaceful a demonstration for about three days until unfortunately things turned a little violent. Um, but that kind of started the movement to get people an eight hour work day um, and better working conditions and um, things like health insurance, things like safe conditions, uh, things of that nature to make working um, better and have you have a better lifestyle. So that kind of started that movement. Um, however, it wasn't until 1916 that it became law in the United States that an eight hour work week was industry standard. So a lot of work went into making that happen. So May Day, May 1st, kind of celebrates a lot of change. Um, so we celebrate the change from kind of colder weather into warmer weather and spring. Uh, we also celebrate the change in working conditions in the United States and abroad. So celebrating a lot of change today, um, celebrating a lot of energy and um, having a very happy day on May Day. Okay, so to celebrate May Day, we are going to do an activity uh, that is associated with the ancient Greek and ancient Roman festivities of May Day. So celebrating the onset of spring. So one of those activities that dates millennium is the creation of May Day baskets or May Day cones. So we are going to make a May Day basket in the form of a cone. So I have already made my uh, sheet here. Okay, I have decorated it and I am going to fold it up. Okay, so if you want to work along or make your own cone, you can follow these instructions. So I'm just gonna fold it up into a cone shape here. Okay, and the point is that it's gonna be able to hold things. 
So I'm going to fold it up and tape it shut okay, so that it stays still. I've got all my supplies here ready to go. Right. And this is a pretty fun and easy activity. Okay, and the point of a Mayday cone is that the tradition says that what you do with a Mayday cone is that you fill it with goodies, okay, and you leave it on the doorstep or the um, like front porch of your neighbor or friend. And you're supposed to just ring the doorbell and run away so they don't see who's left it. Um, and it's supposed to be a fun surprise for your neighbor or friend. Okay, so I've made my cone here. And so that I can hang it on a doorknob on the front door, I'm going to punch some holes on the side. Put my string through as a little holder. Now you can also use, if you don't have the materials to make a Mayday cone, you could make a Mayday basket. So if you've got leftover Easter baskets or um, like a small picnic basket, you could decorate that with flowers. Uh, flowers are really associated with May Day. Um, wild flowers, you could uh, use like some ribbons and things of that nature and make a May Day basket that way if you don't have a cone. But a cone is also very easy and you may have these supplies right at your house, very easily accessible. So now I've got my cone kind of ready and I'm gonna fill it with all of my goodies. Okay, so we have created our May Day cone and I am going to go hang it at the doorstep for my neighbor to enjoy. So here we go. Fun times. Okay, so remember tradition says you hang it on the doorstep or leave it on their porch. Ring the doorbell. Ding ding. And run away before they see you. <laughs> okay, so have fun making your Mayday cones and your Mayday baskets for your neighbor to enjoy celebrating change, celebrating community, celebrating spring, and have a great weekend. Bye.